Hello everyone, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to explain about the robot configuration. There are five types of robot configuration that is polar, cylindrical, cartesian, jointed arm and scar. And any of this configuration we can use for the particular application. Further one by one, I will explain the configuration working. First one is a Cartesian coordinate configuration. It is also called as a rectilinear robot or XYZ robot. It consists of three sliding joints, three sliding joints along the X, Y and Z direction in three dimensional spaces. There are two orthogonal joints. In this one, there are two orthogonal joints are there. Since movement can stop and start simultaneously along the X, Y, Z axis, the motion of the tool tip is smoother. In this one, the whatever the movement is there, that is along the X axis, along the Y axis, along the Z axis. And the, whatever the tool tip motion is there, that is smoother one in this one. Okay, if the movement of the whatever the end effect is there, that is in all the three uh, dimensions it is required, linear dimensions required, then we can use the Cartesian coordinate system. The next one, cylindrical configuration. The robot of cylindrical configuration consists of slide in horizontal position. It consists of a, this slide in the horizontal position and a column in vertical position. The slide in horizontal position, column in vertical position. The arm assembly moves on up and down relative to the column using the L joint. Okay, this one, the column, whatever this uh, uh, arm assembly is there, this assembly will move up and down about this relative to the this L joint. Okay, this is the joint we are going to call as L joint. The column is rotated. This column, whatever is there, that is rotated about its axis. About its axis, this column also rotate using the T joint. Again, this is the joint which provided the T joint. It will rotate about this one. The radial moment of the arm is achieved using the O joint. Here the O joint is provided, and this arm, whatever is there, it can uh, rotate in the radial direction and in this cylindrical configuration simply we can say that one there are two linear motions one radial motion one radial and two linear motions we are going to get from it and where the application is that of one radial and two linear motions required we can use the, this type of configuration third one is a spherical configuration or a polar configuration. The spherical configuration robots also called as a polar configuration robots consist of sliding arm. This arm is sliding and there is a L joint it is having that is actuated relative to the body that is actuated this is actuated the arm is actuated relative to the body and a rotational base the base is rotating along with the pivot along with this pivot this is rotating and this is pivoting is also there which will move the arm in the up and down which can rotate about its a horizontal axis about the horizontal axis this can rotate and also it will move up and down along the this horizontal axis and about the vertical axis it can rotate about the vertical axis it can rotate, about the horizontal axis it can move up and down. And this whatever the uh, rotation is there, that also turns and one linear motion also we are going to get. In this one, we are going to get have the one rotational moment and one angular moment and one linear moment. Okay, and here the R moment about the whatever rotation is there similar to that of the formation of the sphere the formation of the sphere like that it will move therefore it is called as a spherical configuration 
Then moving to the next one, jointed arm configuration. The jointed arm configuration is similar to the human arm, which is attached to the human body. Okay, that only explained here. This type of configuration resembles the human arm where the column swells above the base. The column and the base forms a T-joint. So whatever the column is there, it can rotate about its base. Okay, about T-joint to be forms. The column top connects to the shoulder. This column top connects to the shoulder by using the R-joint. Okay, that is R joint is used. Then the shoulder, whatever is there, it connects to the elbow. Elbow again by using the R joint here. And this configuration has the capability to be controlled at any adjustment in the workspace. This whatever the jointed R configuration, it can be adjusted okay, to the workspace in whatever the required moment is there. For this one, it will be moving about its own axis and the arm, how it will be moving in the rotational way and the elbow also moving, how it is connected to a wrist. Like this, in the surrounding working space, it can move in any direction. Next, moving to the SCARA configuration. The SCARA is a selective compliance assembly robot arm. It's a selective compliance assembly robot arm that whatever the movements required that will be selective compliance and that is the assembly of robot arm that is assembly of the robot arm it will, each will be connected and SCARA is the type of the industrial robot and it is mostly the SCARA robot is most commonly used in the second place or a assembly operations where high speed and high accuracy is required. High speed and high accuracy where it is required, this can be used. Generally, SCARA robot can operate at a higher speed and with the option, optional clean room specification. Okay, optional clean room specification. That means it should not have any uh, obstacle. The specification should be clean room so that it can move around it. The 4-axis configuration of SCARA robots allows them to move along the X, Y and Z planes. It also provides them with a 360 degree of rotational movement around the Z axis, which allows for the cylindrical work envelope. This SCARA type, whatever the configuration is there, it can move around the X, Y and Z direction similar to that of the uh, linear whatever the uh, Cartesian coordinate system is there and also it can revolve around the 360 degree so that it can produce a work envelope in any direction and it will have the higher speed and the accuracy therefore for SCARA configuration it will be having the much importance in the industrial application and about this whatever the uh, next working we are going to I am going to discuss in the further sessions Thanks for watching. If you like, share, subscribe.